something you see every day. A gunship in your rear view mirror. There is a whole chapter in your Wikipedia entry entitled Offensive Remarks. <laughs> My Wikipedia entry should say gets up, writes stuff, has supper, goes to bed. That's because that's all I ever do. Um, and I bet yours is just as bonkers. But go on, what does it say in offensive? It says, oh no, it just says there's a whole chapter about offensive yeah. remarks. And I, and you do have a, a reputation for that. I wonder how much of what you say do you actually mean and how much is about just stirring the possum? Well, it's interesting because, you see, it's mostly offensive to one newspaper in the UK, or maybe two, the, the two I don't write for. And it's not actually, if you look at them, very offensive to anybody because they're the sort of things you would say to friends at parties and in the pub and what have you. You would talk like that. It's just, it's so easy to turn them around and say, oh, I've sparked fury. Well, I've always sparked fury every day. James May sparked fury only this morning by laughing at Toyota prices not being able to stop. <laughs> but he hasn't really. Everybody's laughing about the Toyota price recall. Everybody's laughing about that. It's so funny that environmentalists are now going, oh, I won't stop. Um, and it just shows God doesn't like the Green Party. Um, <laughs> But when you go home and the papers are full of you having called the PM a four-letter word, does the family ever go, oh, Jeremy? No, my wife pretty much calls the Prime Minister that four-letter word <laughs> 30 times a day. Clot is what you're talking about, yeah? That, well, that was, yes, that was the word. It was that yeah, four-letter word that started with... Clot. C. Coot. <laughs> coot. Gordon Brown is a coot. Look at their faces. Are they horrified? <laughs> James and I made it through the dust with our lives considerably shortened. <laughs> I've got consumption and TB. <laughs> I've got every single 1920s disease. <laughs> Do you love it? Do you love all of it? I, I love being involved in a programme that's very successful. It's a very nice feeling. It's very nice, for instance, that you bothered to get up this morning to come down and talk to us. I mean, that's a very nice... You think, oh, well, that's people who are interested in my job. Imagine if everybody was as interested in everybody else's job as people are in ours. If you went up to cleaners in hospitals and traffic wardens and then said, oh, God, what a fantastic job you're doing, aren't you a sex symbol and aren't you marvellous? Everybody would be a lot happier. So I, it's very nice like that, yeah. Your mum told a story once about walking a short distance to a restaurant with you in London, I think it was, and um, you were being hounded by passers-by. Is that sometimes a bit onerous? Well, you know, yes, but then it's worse when it stops, probably. I mean, it, it, it is a pest, because it always happens just as you're telling an anecdote, and you just get to the important bit. Someone comes along and goes, oh, I'm really sorry, you know, my son's a big fan. And I haven't told a story for about three years now, that, well, I've got to the end of it, but, uh, but what, do you, what would you rather, work on a terrible programme that nobody watches? Although I imagine, unless you look like Helen Mirren being papped in your swimmers on holidays, is probably not that much fun. I do get papped in my swimmers on holiday. <laughs> and then environmentalists come and try to push me back in the water again. <laughs> oh, God, look, there's a beached one here. You have three kids, and in a few years' time, they'll all be driving. Does that frighten you? Um, it doesn't frighten me. It fills me with a certain sense of unease. You know, because you do think, oh, God, they're going to crash. We have had in Australia some horrendous car crashes in recent times. I don't know how much you know about yeah, that, but involving young drivers, yeah. uh, drink and speed. The latter of those two things are things that you've done on Top Gear a lot. Do you... Do well, you speed. Speed never killed... Speeding. Well, speed never killed anyone. It's very important to get that straight. Speed has never killed a soul. Suddenly becoming stationary, that's what gets you. See, these young people think that they can, they can take us out and, and drive at these speeds and nothing will happen. And, of course, something does happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, what do you do about that? What do you do about the copycat element, I suppose? People were crashing long before Top Gear came along and in greater numbers and with bigger consequences. So, so what does that mean? I mean, what do we do? Honestly, nothing. You know, you fiddle around with the law and say, OK, well, you've got to, be, you've got to wear your pee plates for a bit longer or you're not allowed to pass your driving test till you're 24 or you can fiddle about, but it will make, unfortunately, no difference, really, because kids are kids. It's a pessimistic view, isn't it? It's a realistic view. On a brighter note, 
how much longer do you think Top Gear can go for? Do you worry that you're going to run out of stunts? Uh, no. Yes, possibly. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, we'll get very old quite soon. We already are quite old. And we'll get very old and then we'll start forgetting things, maybe wetting ourselves. <laughs> and I think nobody really wants to watch a, a grown man wetting himself on television. But so we'll bring three new people along then and they'll take it over, I hope. Carry on. Until then, Jeremy Clarkson seems happy to revel in his rock star lifestyle. This motoring journo with supposedly no ambition has done pretty well for himself. Let's be honest, it is only a pokey car show on, on a little known BBC channel in England. <laughs> With a thumping huge budget and a global audience of what, 300 million or something, isn't it? Oh, well, so they say. I don't know how they do those figures. The cameraman's now going to walk into the sea. I'm not going to wet myself laughing if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> No. Might the Stig ever be a woman? Could be, although there is some evidence in those overalls to suggest <laughs> that he actually is a man. Well, I remember from biology lessons at school, women are shaped a bit differently, and I've looked quite carefully and I can't see any evidence at all of womanhood in there. You, you could dress that up, though. Well, one can you in know. clubs in Saigon, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm not sure in racing overalls that you can get away with it, really. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your stay. Thank oh, you God, very I am much. Doing, I am doing it. It's fantastic. <laughs> when you get over your hangover. Yeah. No, that's, that has, I've had that for a month. <laughs> <laughs> and the new Top Gear season kicks off next Tuesday at 7.30pm on this network.